everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I hear you, you clicked on the video, you saw the title, and you're curious too. Let's go ahead and go into the shop today. I'll introduce you to a little project early. You'll see a full video on this eventually. But it has halogens in the front currently and no lights on its fenders. And I figured I'd show you a short little video. Are LED headlight upgrades worth it for your tractor? Should you buy them? It should be worth noting that everything in this video is not sponsored and was purchased with a FruitGenSales.com. First up for the headlights, we have these right here. These are high capacity PAR 36 LED bulbs, trapezoid beam, with also a glass halogen style front design, which I really, really like about these. Some people like, you know, uh, finding a way to mount halos in there. Some people just run blacked out ones. I like these, um, and these are easier to get and easier to just pop right in there. I like the little tagline down there. And for the fender lights, these are Tiger Light TL 2060s. They are 2800 lumen. They are more popular for the John Deere's. However, they have the same style mounting system. Those will mount right up. These are gonna go on the insides and then some floodlights will go on the outside. So let's go ahead and give it a quick little rudimentary light test indoors. And we'll do this outdoors as well when it's dark out, just to kind of give you an idea. I've gone ahead and turned the exposure on the camera down to where, what it looks like through my eyes. And uh, that is not very bright. That is our beam spread. That is literally it. If you're out in the field and you're working in the dark, that's not enough, man. Installation on these is pretty simple. You're gonna grab yourself a screwdriver taking care. Old halogen lights like this are glass and you're going to put your screwdriver up in here. This is all rubber. So you're just gonna go up in here and you're slowly gonna pry out. And you're just gonna be careful not to bust the bulb. And as you can see, I've gotten it out quite a ways. I can grab it with my hand now. And bingo. That is your bulb pulled out. Now you're just gonna unscrew these little fork things. Let me get the camera focus up. You're gonna unscrew these little things right here. So I guess this is the first installation tip now that I've seen them for the first time. You are going to need to put some new female spade connectors on this side. This feels pretty dang quality. High capacity definitely, definitely knows what they're doing when they are selling you these Cree LEDs. Uh, the aluminum backing with the fins is for cooling, obviously. Feels really rigid, feels really nice. Does not feel like a cheap bulb. This feels like what they cost. They should be a whole lot better those halogens. I'm going to get to it, uh, unplugging this one and show you what I'm doing for the wiring. Here's bulb number one out. This one's in really good shape. Uh, always keep this kind of stuff around for spares. This is a bulb from April 23rd of 2001. Okay, I'll show you the process on the next bulb, but I got the first one in. And uh, yeah, it's pretty dang simple. All you got to do is get you a set of these. Right here off amazon.com, just some good old heat shrink female. Spade connectors, crimpers, strippers, cutters. You're gonna cut the old screw on ends off and you're just gonna put spades on. It has options for both, both where you can put a screw and a nut on and that would probably be more secure in some cases. Um, but for this one, I'm just gonna run the spades until if something goes wrong, then I'll probably go to the screw and nut. But yeah, there's your comparison and difference right there in looks. Um, both look good, but I gotta say, kind of a fan of that, uh, slightly darker shade that this one has in it. I will now show you how you do it. Once you get the lights to this point right here, you're going to take these little old school forks and you're going to cut them off. Then you're going to take your wire strippers and you're going to strip that back. You also for certain want to make sure that your crimp is for the right size wire. These are 14 gauge, I believe. And uh, you're gonna want 
a 14 gauge crimp. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and heat shrink those on there. Just got one more to go. I'll show you how you do it. Pretty easy. You're gonna wanna twist this wire up. Then you're just gonna shove that on there. And then you're gonna take your crimps, pretty self-explanatory, crimp it down, and then heat shrink it with a heat gun or a torch. And now that you got that all plugged in, you are just going to pop it right in there, making sure to pay attention to where it says top. And you're just gonna kind of pop it in there and then weave it in there with your screwdriver carefully. Make sure not to scratch the polycarbonate on the outside and you are done. So I went ahead and put the fender lights on. I'll give you a quick run through of how that works. There's a stud through the headlight with a nut. And then I just ran a big washer. They don't come with those, but that's what I ran. There's kind of a flat spot on the back of these little holes here. So they push up against that. And then when you put a washer on there, it kind of flattens up against that. So this was this side. I then took the wiring, cleaned it up a little bit, but I could have showed you a little bit better what's in here. There's a red and a black wire. They both run that way across that side. And then as I come through here, they actually go and take a turn this way to meet up with the other wires right there. These, this side does the same, it goes down here, and then it meets up on that same line. And then they hook up right here. Now there's two power wires for a reason. On these tractors, for some odd reason, there is a switch position, which I will show you all the switch positions, that turns the headlights off and keeps all the lights on the fenders on. If you go here, and switch it all the way up to R, the fronts are off. And I have it wired to turn the rears on. But then we just switch it back down to B or D, and boom. We've got all the lightage, which I'm not sure how I'm gonna set that up, but I would like it this way, that where B on the switch turns the floodlights on, which are gonna be here. Um, That'd be kind of slick because then you could have low beam, high beam, so you're not blinding everybody as you're driving down the road. Because as it stands right now, the minute you turn that switch on, all four of these current lights turn on. Okay, note to self. If you had an old cab tractor that had a blinker wiring harness for the Cygnus stat, signal stat turn stock, do not wire your lights through that on accident. That made these super dim. Now they are wired to the original cab light harness to run the fender lights. Those are now way brighter, incredibly way brighter, but it gets even better. Weirdly, if you switch to B, it makes them brighter. I don't know why this happens. I'm not gonna question it, but I will check it with a meter to see what in the world is going on there. <laughs>